Welcome, everyone. Uh, hope you're enjoying the AWS Innovate sessions. Uh, today, together, we will touch in um, no-code machine learning using Amazon SageMaker Canvas. So Amazon SageMaker Canvas um, is a new feature of Amazon SageMaker. It's been released in the la last reInvent, so reInvent uh, 2021. And it's part of the SageMaker ecosystem. It's a feature of SageMaker that allows you um, to train machine learning models, build, train, and deploy machine learning models uh, without the need of writing code. Now, together, I've split uh, uh, the session in uh, three parts. So the first part will explain a bit what is Amazon SageMaker Canvas and how it can help organization, uh, your company, to accelerate value creation with the uh, machine learning. And then we'll jump straight into the AWS console, get access to Canvas, and uh, I'll show you an end-to-end -end demo um, on an example a marketing campaign data set uh, for a bank. We'll import data and um, um, diagnose the data, be able to train um, different models uh, with it, um, and then generate predictions. I'll show you that. So how does it work today uh, to do machine learning in, in an organization? Well, typically, uh, machine learning starts with a, a question. Can we solve uh, a forecasting use case for our finance department uh, so that we can improve the sales uh, growth by X amount of percent? Usually, this starts with a, a line of business um, stakeholder that raised the question, can we better use the data uh, to solve a business need? Now, this discussion happens with uh, machine learning experts. And this, as part of a, a machine learning team, can be comprised of uh, different um, personas. So you will have maybe a data engineer in your team, uh, a, a machine learning scientist, and then maybe a machine learning engineer working together, or sometimes can be one person. But the bottom line is the, 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 the main goal for this team will be to get access to the data understand the business uh, requirements, and then start to experiment initially on can we solve the business need uh, with the data we are given. So can we train one or multiple machine learning models uh, so that it can have sufficient uh, metrics, for example, an accuracy, to answer, yes, we can improve the sales by X amount of percent. After this, uh, typically starts the, the more operationalization of the machine learning project. So this is where it becomes more the territory of machine learning engineers uh, to collaborate still with the machine learning scientists. And so they will work into automating the workflow, uh, versioning um, the, the, the models, and then continuously deploy after testing the models into production and also do model monitoring. Now, in an organization, uh, an organization that creates value quickly uh, with machine learning is one that can iterate through that process as fast as possible. The challenge is, as of today, um, some of those uh, uh, machine learning projects still require a few weeks from months uh, to actually uh, get to uh, outcomes so that the machine learning scientist team can uh, be free to work on another project and iterate uh, through no new business needs. Now. Here are challenges on the other side of uh, in an organization. Why can we not, as of today, uh, leverage um, uh, some of those analysts? So analysts would be um, uh, some uh, people that would be available maybe in an IT organization or directly in the line of business. And those people may not have the machine learning uh, 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 skill sets or, or coding skill sets to actually uh, deliver uh, sufficient um, machine learning models to their business. Now, um, this is because uh, machine learning still, as of today, requires um, um, a, a certain amount of expertise that is um, only present in a, a selected set, very restricted set of, um, of, um, of resources in an organization. Another challenge that analysts may face is not only the need to train machine learning models and put them into production to generate outcomes, but very often, uh, when the model generates predictions, they may be good, well accurate, uh, but they will also need to explain why are they uh, predicting certain values. And so alongside just training a model, 
Ana is, will need also to um, uh, provide explainability features um, in order for the, the model to be trusted by the business. So that adds additional complexity. Also, they don't have as of today a, a way to collaborate easily with the um, ML um, uh, teams in order to get their models validated so that they can safely deploy uh, them into production. Another challenge is uh, uh, the lack of um, available uh, no-code machine learning tools that are transparent um, and also um, have no license fees, essentially. Here comes Amazon Sage Micro Canvas. So with Amazon Sage Micro Canvas, this analyst uh, available in your organization will be able to uh, leverage the data they have uh, um, uh, in, in the company. So point to data, for example, from S3, upload data from their laptop, or, or point to data warehouses uh, available in, in, in your company, and then quickly diagnose the data, uh, train new machine learning models based on AutoML feature of SageMaker. Now, alongside this, they can collaborate with the machine learning teams to get feedback and improvement from them. And then, as usual, in, in Amazon SageMaker, there's no upfront cost and no licenses cost, so uh, pretty much you um, use you pay for what you use in terms of uh, compute used by your um, Amazon SageMaker. Now, here are examples of, um, of uh, um, use cases you may encounter, like different lines of business. You can have a, an HR department or finance department um, in your organization, and they, they may have, for example, a monthly dashboard they need to produce. They need to um, have some uh, uh, forecasting feature added in the dashboard. Um, and that's something they can train a model with, get predictions, um, add a bit more intelligence in, uh, in their current processes, for example, and many others. So without further ado, let's go um, in, the, in the AWS console. So I'll uh, uh, give you um, them. So here I'm in the AWS console. Um, what you will see um, uh, in the console page of SageMaker is the possibility, if you have existing uh, SageMaker Studio users, uh, to launch Amazon SageMaker Canvas. However, um, if you uh, want also to provide analysts with uh, one link um, and just an SSO login to be able to leverage Canvas, this is something that you will be able to leverage um, uh, in, 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 in SageMaker so that actually the end users of Canvas do not need even to log in into the console. Now, this is the main page of Amazon SageMaker Canvas. This is my page for my profile. What we see on the left is a, a panel where we'll be able to um, uh, quickly access models that have uh, trained or are uh, in the way of, uh, of training, uh, data sets that I have uh, uploaded or leveraged already. What you can see in the middle is the list of models I have uh, available for me. So you can see I have already a, a, a model that has been trained. We'll come back to this um, uh, uh, later on. Without further ado, we'll go into the, the top right corner of the window. And what you can see is a button called New Model. And so we can train a model called Marketing, uh, marketing Campaign. And this one will be uh, a quick model, for example. So find a, a name that uh, um, uh, will allow you over time um, to find to you know make sense of which model you've trained. Now here there's a bunch of things happening in the in the screen. You are in the workflow of training the model, and so at the top right corner, what you will see is a, a, um, a certain drop down list of different versions of your model. So now we are working in a version one of your our marketing campaign quick model. And this is in the state of a draft. Now, then you can see other like four tabs available in Amazon SageMaker Canvas. So in my workflow, we will have the first tab to select the data, maybe join different data sets that you may have available. Um, then you will have a tab to build a model uh, in with different options. So quick model or standard model will touch on what they mean. And then you can analyze the results of the model. And then there's a, a tab for uh, generating predictions. 
So here we already have an example marketing data sets that I have imported. Just so you know, um, if you go on the, the, the right uh, side of the, the, the window, you will have a, um, a page appearing, a prompt, where um, you will be able to either uh, upload data, like a, a, for example, a CSV file from your laptop, um, point to S3 packets, or even uh, access data that are available in your data warehouse, such as Redshift and, and Snowflake. Now, that marketing data sets um, is structured data, and so it comes with different uh, uh, features such as the age of a person, um, whether um, uh, which months um, uh, are they, they born on, and we do a, an offer um, for, et cetera, et cetera. And so really what we want to predict here is one column called offer, whether um, the person is likely to accept the offer from the bank or not. Okay, so we will select the data set. And so now that we've selected the data set, um, we will be able to move into the new tab, the other tab, which is called B. In this tab, uh, you can diagnose the data, choose what column uh, in your data set um, should be uh, the target column, so which one the model should look at to train uh, with the other uh, attributes of the data, and so on and so forth. So here, you will start uh, on the top left corner, select a column to predict. You will see that Sedgwick Canvas has done already an analysis on data quality. So are there missing values? It tries to predict the type of the, the, the columns that you have. So is it a, um, a numeric column? Is it categorical column? And so when you select um, uh, in, the, in the, the top left corner, the um, uh, target column, it will also tell you what is the distribution uh, of uh, values in this column. So what you can see here is we have 89% um, of no, so likely not to accept uh, an offer from the bank, and 10% uh, of yes. Um, um, so this is typically what we call uh, an imbalanced data set. Uh, so what we will need to see is how the model performs um, based on this imbalanced data, and whether we need uh, ML teams, machine learning teams, to jump in and train a model uh, with more um, uh, complex uh, strategy. Then you move into the model type. So uh, it already uh, detected that we have two values and that we want to, um, uh, to uh, predict on. Now you can change the type um, uh, of the problem you want to solve. Typically, the reason you will give a type is because Amazon SageMaker Canvas can leverage different models based on that problem. And then on the right side, you will have uh, options. So you have three options uh, for um, training model. You have one which actually doesn't really train a model. It just pre give you a preview of uh, how the model will perform, uh, what are the uh, feature importance, for example, which column is more important in the predictions. And then you have two other options in the, in the purple button. So you have a, a quick build and a standard build. We'll come back to the standard build after. It typically takes one to four hours, depending on the size of your data to train. It's really the thorough um, machine learning training uh, that you would do. What we will do together is a quick build, which usually takes uh, 10 to 15 minutes to train, depending on your data. So when you click into uh, the, the type of build, this will take you to the Analyze uh, tab. So we've moved to selecting the data, maybe joining data sets, uh, diagnosing the data, uh, and choosing the right problem we want to solve. And now we move into the Analyze tab, which is uh, when the model will be trained, we'll come back with some results that we can analyze. Oh, OK, so now we are back. So um, here the model has trained. Uh, it took uh, a bit uh, like four, four minutes to train uh, the quick model. And so what you will see um, on the top left corner is uh, the model status. So there's a main metric um, uh, that will allow you to assess very quickly, hey, is my model performing uh, uh, OK or not OK, basically. Now on the uh, bottom half of the screen, you will see uh, predict, um, explanations 
on the model predictions. So which uh, features uh, tend to uh, lead to the uh, uh, most predictive outcome for the model? Here what we see is the number employed um, and then duration are, um, um, have high correlation uh, with the, the, the model predictions, for example. So that's something that gives us a bit of diagnostic in terms of how the model defines uh, their predictions, essentially. If you want to go a, a bit deeper, you're familiar with some of the machine learning metrics. What you can do is go into the, the other tab called scoring. And here you have either scoring um, on the model that is done in plain English. And if you want, you can also drill down into advanced metrics. So those are metrics that will be used uh, usually by data scientists to assess the model performance. It's called a confusion matrix. You'll have F1 score, accuracy, uh, precision recall on certain um, uh, uh, um, classes uh, of the target, so yes or no. And that's something you can share with data scientists um, and they can tell you whether, yes, the model is trained, the, the accuracy looks good, but also uh, the model is most likely to be fairly robust. Now, if you want, you can also move into the predict, the next step, which is uh, predict, use that model to generate predictions directly into Amazon SageMaker Canvas. You can either um, generate prediction in batch. So batch prediction will be basically a process where maybe you will upload data um, on a daily basis, maybe every day at 12 p.m. Um, and so you will be able, same thing, import uh, the new data that you, you want to use for prediction. And SageMaker Canvas will take care of uh, taking your whole CSV file, generate predictions out of it. Here, we can go into the single prediction. So directly, almost like a what if um, analysis, SageMaker Canvas can um, allow you to generate predictions um, uh, while moving or changing certain values of your data set. So here I change the value of duration from 83 to 100, and then I can see how the model, the model uh, behaves uh, based on those metrics. This is something, for example, that can be useful for purchase in the department where based on model uh, predictions, uh, they can decide uh, should they buy uh, certain products in certain countries. So this is the standard workflow you will see in Amazon SageMaker Canvas. You select the data, diagnose it, uh, select the right problem uh, that you want to solve, click, uh, hey, I want to train a model, and then uh, you can analyze the results of the model, see uh, if it performs well, um, and, and generate predictions out of it. So here, what I want to show you is also another scenario in which um, instead of using the quick model, maybe you will have used the standard model the standard model uh, takes a bit longer, takes two, one to two hours to, to train your, your model, depending on the size of your data set. And uh, this is a scenario in which actually the train model with quick uh, option um, has better accuracy, looks like it has better accuracy uh, than the one with the standard model. So you may wonder, right, if we click into that um, um, model that I trained previously with the standard option, uh, if it takes longer to train, uh, you would expect it to actually perform better. So this is where um, the collaboration, this is a scenario where the collaboration between analysts and uh, the machine learning teams, the experts will be uh, beneficial. And so what I can do, for example, uh, in this case, I can say, uh, when I have the analyze tab button, I can either uh, click share uh, with SageMaker Studio here or share on the top right corner. When I do this with standard model, I'm able to select the version of the model I want to share with my machine learning teams and even add uh, a few nodes. So it'll say, for example, can you um, check, uh, you check why this model has lower accuracy, for example. And so what you can do is then create a link. So you can uh, create a, 
uh, a certain uh, uh, unique link that uh, uh, you can share, for example, by email or you know, in your company chat with your data scientist. Now, let's see how uh, it looks like when I go into that link. As a data scientist now, that link will take me directly into Amazon SageMaker Studio. And it will allow me to get access to the under the hood artifact uh, that were used to train that model. So I have access to how the process, the data was processed, what model were trained, uh, etc. If I want in Amazon SageMaker Studio, let me make this bigger. I can go into the experiments and trial, the autopilot uh, jobs, and I can see here that uh, uh, someone has launched the canvas. Uh, autopilot job and so if I right click into uh, you know the autopilot job I'm able to see the different models different um, hyperparameter options it has trained now where I have full transparency as a data scientist is that I can get access to um, the date the way SageMaker autopilot has explored the data so here is a notebook I can import in my studio domain and uh, see what decision were taken by autopilot. And if I want, I can rerun uh, the experiment um, with different parameters, different approach uh, than what autopilot has given. I have full control in terms of the artifacts and code that were used in here. So that's for the processing data. Same thing, so for the model themselves, I can open a, a notebook and import it uh, and rework it um, in my, uh, um, in my uh, studio domain as a data scientist. Um, for example, I can understand very quickly that this is a binary classification problem and then understand what container were used to train the model, um, what piece of code were used, you know, piece of Python code that were used for uh, training different models, what hyperparameter were used uh, to launch hyperparameter tuning jobs. So I have full control, full visibility as a data scientist to diagnostic, but also iterate on the models. Now, alongside this, as a, as a machine learning teams, um, if we say, hey, the model is, uh, is right to go into production, you then uh, are able to take this model and uh, with SageMaker pipelines, for example, automate the workflow, deploy it into production, integrate with the, uh, the dashboard that uh, your analysts use in their day-to-day -day basis. So that was it for the, for, the, for the demo. What we've learned today is um, how companies and organizations uh, can accelerate the value creation and scale the value creation uh, using Amazon SageMaker Canvas. Typically, Amazon SageMaker Canvas could be um, a, a good fit for analysts, uh, business analysts, maybe SMEs, domain experts in your organization, or even sometimes data scientists could use it at the beginning of a project to quickly get to um, a, a, a feeling of um, how the, the models uh, will perform in the business team. Now, when you will get started, I will suggest to contact your uh, machine learning platform administrators, the IT teams, in order for you to set up either uh, an SSO login where you just have a link and uh, uh, credentials and password uh, to access uh, Canvas, or whether you would access it uh, via the AWS console. If you want to get started, there's one link. Uh, this is the SageMaker slash Canvas um, uh, link. Uh, I've put it uh, down below. So that's what we've done today. We learned, we've shown um, how you can uh, scale machine learning value uh, with Amazon SageMaker Canvas. We walk through a, an end-to-end -end demo on how you can import the data, um, diagnose the data set um, that you've uh, imported in SageMaker Canvas, and then using different options, either a quick model or a standard model, how you can um, build the model, analyze its results, um, generate predictions, and maybe share the model with your machine learning team so they can uh, approve the model to go to production or iterate. Thank you uh, for, for this session. And so uh, if you want to uh, reach out to me, 
my email is down below.